I think it could be busy out. I've just got to kind of stay away from those areas. Kensington Church Street? No, <laughs> it's shut. This could be sticky. Going past the aftermath of one of the biggest rock bands in the world and into the heart of a busy West End, yeah, it might not be that great. Yeah, it's Park Lane Northbound open. I mean, what would happen if they shut it? Like, that would be ridiculous. So, starting off at Notting Hill Gate, and this lady just wants to go to Kensington Court. Nice, easy one to get you started. You go down Palace Gardens Terrace, or PG Tips, as we know it in the cab. Nice, easy acronym so you can remember it. It's always worth paying attention to every little street sign you might see, because you never know. That could come in handy later on in the shift. Down Kensington Church Street, left into Kensington High Street, forward into Kensington Road, and bosh, we get ourselves right into Kensington Court. You might notice some embassies in this area. There's quite a few cluttered here within Kensington Court. En route to dropping off, I accept quite a substantial app job. As I've not been in town, I don't know necessarily how busy it might be. And as this app job is just around the corner, it makes sense to be able to get the work whilst it's guaranteed. But of course, it is the law of sod that you drop off in this little area of Kensington Court where you never expect to get a hail whatsoever. Someone's trying to hail me down outside this block. I let the lady know, sorry, I'm going on to another job and I quickly disappear. The job I'm picking up is in Victoria Grove and it's clearly a school run, it's half free after all. As I'm in this one way bit of Victoria Grove, I can continue southbound and end up in Cornwall Gardens. Now the job is going to Upper Montague Street in that Marlebon area. So basically I know I've got to get to Park Lane and just up from there somehow. So coming out of Cornwall Gardens, I'll go up Gloucester Road, right Elveston Place, left Queensgate, and I'll use these lights at the top to get my right onto Kensington Road. Now, when you start a lot of these app jobs, they actually have an inbuilt sat nav that will tell you, you know, how to get to the location. And this one is adamantly telling me to go through the park. I already know this isn't an option because it's British Summertime Festival. Basically, they shut off Hyde Park to have some really big acts play in the park. This is explained by all the traffic you'll see here at the barracks by Knightsbridge. And even as I'm right by the Mandarin Hotel, it still wanted me to do a U-turn and go back through the park. Clear justification as to why the knowledge is so good and you don't always want to blindly follow the sat nav. And look, as we get to Hyde Park Corner, you can even see their slash hanging out ahead of the gig. Why they can't open South Carriage Drive? I mean, it's been shut since the pandemic, but it would just make so much easy relief in this area when they do disastrous things such as shutting the West Carriage Drive. Just cut off all that sort of traffic going around the corner of Hyde Park, especially for dropping off big events like this or Winter Wonderland in, of course, the December time. So we continue on Park Lane, around Marble Arch, up Edgware Road, and I'm gonna come in right from George Street. Up into Seymour Place, and we have the number plate of the day, 850J. Look at that. I'm on York Street and on the way, she says left here. Now, left here can mean stop me on the left here, as I do. And in this case, she says, no, 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 left here, as in turn left here. It's amazing how some people aren't that descriptive with what they actually mean and it can cause more confusion. Eventually, drop them there, sorted. Oh, wow. Well. That's a bit of a gnarly start, but that app job I just done, it's hilarious because it's tending to go through the park and it actually indicated there was a section of traffic in the park. It said 23 minutes for the whole job, but I would estimate it's probably about 23 minutes just to do that little bit of the park, especially if there's that much red in there. And then you get there, park shut anyway. So for anyone who's like, yeah, let's do away with the knowledge, we'll just use sat navs. <laughs> I love what the streets can tell you, really. I think, it, I think it could be busy out. I've just got to kind of stay away from those areas. And but you know it's luck of the draw. Hopefully, we don't get anything that pulls me back into that area and gets me stuck there. So ideally, I don't really want to end up in that Knightsbridge kind of barracks area. Really hunting for the next job, we see a two nine six diplomatic number plate. That is Angola. Before this lady eventually jumps in at Crawford Street, she is after the Portland Hospital. Pretty much a doddle because the direction that we are pointing in will take us straight to the Portland Hospital. Crawford Street, Paddington Street, Nottingham Place. Nottingham Street, Marylebone High Street, Left Devonshire Street. And left in the Great Portland Street, 
drop the lady off there. Nice. I'm very quick to get into a groove because I'm so lucky that as I drop off, I get an on and off job. This family wants to go from the Portland Hospital and they just say Curzon Street Mayfair. Nice. They've not specified where on Curzon Street they're after, so I'm going to attack it from Barclay Square. And to get them to Barclay Square, I ideally need Regent Street. So what I'll do is I'll go down Great Portland Street as far as I can go, riding all the traffic lights, and then get a right into Great Castle Street. This is the last little point where I can pull out onto Regent Street. Sadly, it is quite a bit busy here, but this is the kind of designated route that I need. Right into Conduit Street, which forwards into Bruton Street, around Barclay Square, going past the Lansdowne Club on the right-hand side. As we approach Curzon Street, they actually let me know they're after Chesterfield Street. Now, I mishear this and hear Chesterfield Hill, so I'm already wiggling up Queen Street, Charles Street, and then getting right to Chesterfield Hill, and they say, no, 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 Chesterfield Street. So just turn back round, and luckily, it's not too far away from Chesterfield Hill. These minor blips sometimes happen in the cab. I mean, all I can do is just give an apology uh, and usually just give a slight reduction in the fare, just dependent on how big the error is. And as we drop outside, we spot another blue plaque, and that's, of course, Bo Brummel who used to live here. You would have seen Bo Brummel if you've gone down German Street, and it's a statue looking up into the Piccadilly Arcade. He was an important figure in Regency England, and uh, supposedly at one point he was the arbiter of men's fashion in Britain. Quite a close... Uh, friend of the Prince Regent. Once I drop off, exit on the Curzon Street, and I'm quite quick to pick up again on Queen Street. This must be a pretty good shift. Stay tuned just to see how well this might end up. This gentleman wants to go to Harrods. Now, I could wiggle back through Mayfair and come along onto Curzon Street, come up by Park Lane, but if I go around past the running footman and back past the Lansdowne Club, I can exit out onto Piccadilly using Bolton Street, because of course it sets me up very neatly for that underpass. You ain't got to worry about traffic lights or giving way, you just straight into the underpass and away over into Knightsbridge. They've changed the arrows here on Bolton Street. It used to be that you could be in the left-hand lane or the right-hand lane to turn right, but I think too many private hires were killing those sets of traffic lights. Basically, as you turn right out of Bolton Street, there's a set of traffic lights in an island there at Piccadilly, which somehow everyone used to hit. It was like... Every week, those traffic lights would end up just being knocked over. We work our way down a Brompton Road. I can see the traffic's building up a little bit here, and I just drop my customer just by the bus stop. This just then means that if the rank is available and there's no cabs behind me, I can have a go at trying to rank on the front door of Harrods. It's being really efficient with my time. And I'm in luck, because it looks like the rank is free. Quite quickly get to the point. And I have this group who wish to go to Selfridges. Just the summertime classic, Harrods Selfridges. We've seen it a million times before. Sadly, because of the closures uh, in the West Carriage Drive and with a lot of traffic forced into the High Park Corner area, this isn't going to be a good route. The options are either Brompton Road, uh, so doing a U-turn where we are, or up onto Knightsbridge. I'm actually going to opt for Raphael Street. This comes up by Zuma Restaurant, and it brings you right by the sort of top end of Brompton Road cutting out a lot of the traffic I can already see here. The issue is, as I'm heading for it, I can see a TX4 driver heading towards me with the look of, don't do it, mate. Basically saying, I've already been there, traffic's quite heavy, don't bother with it. So, follow him into Trevor Square, and Trevor Square doesn't look much better either. And once we get out onto Knightsbridge, you can see just how heavy it is in this barracks area. Again, this is everyone who's gonna be dropped um, in the area for British Summertime Festival in Hyde Park. Also, anyone who's wanting to go around the Hyde Park area with West Carriage Drive shut means they're all going to be forced up Park Lane. Added to the fact that it's summertime, it's just the way it goes. Going past the Mandarin, you can see there's actually scabs on the rank. This is another indicator that it's generally quite busy on the streets. Quite popular ranks like Harrods, the Mandarin Hotel, places where it's very easy for a taxi to come along and park on that taxi rank. If they're empty and going one step beyond, you can see private hire drivers picking up on the taxi rank, which they're not allowed to do, by the way. That is TFL policy because taxi ranks are, of course, exclusively for taxi drivers. It then shows you how busy it is because there's not been a taxi that's been free to kind of push them off the rank and say, oi, clear off kind of thing. I use every bit of available space on the Hyde Park Corner slip road around by that bus lane there. The Lanesborough Hotel on the right hand side actually used to be St George's Hospital. Now, some of you will know that St George's Hospital was actually in Tooting. Here's a few other shots of how that hotel would have looked in its hospital glory. You can see it's quite a bit heavier the other way coming down Park Lane. 
eventually get ourselves up Park Lane, right into Brookgate, forward into Brook Street, Grosvenor Square, and I'm going to do the standard, which is I'm going to come in through Duke Street so I can drop on the side door of Selfridges. I'm quite lucky that they actually want to jump out quite early at this bit on Duke Street. It's nice, there's no cabs behind me, meaning that if the rank's free, I can give the side door of Selfridges a go. This job from Harrods to Selfridges, even though they're bailed here at Duke Street, took 34 minutes. And look, side door of Selfridges, not a cab in sight, and there's someone there waiting for me. They hop on in and they want Buckingham Gate. Now, knowing that Park Lane has restrictions because of British Summertime Festival and how busy Hyde Park Corner is, I actually opt to go through Mayfair. It's relatively quiet at this time in the summer. I feel like all the big dogs who would normally work in that kind of quite affluent area are out of London for the summer. Left Brook Street, right Davies Street, fall into Barclay Square, leave that at Barclay Street, and I'm gonna opt to cut through the Palace Roads. Left Piccadilly, right St. James's Street, down St. James's Street and past St. James's Palace. This was kind of like a private playground that was commissioned by King Henry VIII to keep him away from the mundanities of court at Whitehall. Right, the Mall. Bear left at the Queen Victoria Memorial. Right, the Birdcage Walk. And then left, setting us up perfectly for Buckingham Gate. Nice. I stop at the Iron Lung, have a convenience break, grab a trade paper, and as it's another busy shift video in London, this video is of course sponsored by Y-Food. I always carry a Y-Food in the cab, in the boot, they're ready to go at a moment's notice. It's just the nature of the job. You never know where you're gonna end up, and chances are, if I do end up somewhere where I can get food, it's probably gonna be less than optimum in terms of nutrition. So, in steps Y Food. Now, by using my discount code of taxi-youtube, or the link down below, you'll get 10% off site-wide. But in really exciting news, they've actually expanded their offerings into WH Smith, including the WH Smith Travel Hubs, which you'll see at all the big major railway stations in London. They've got a complete wrap round of advertisement here in the super busy Waterloo station. So grab yours in store or go to Y Foods website online. So if you're out and about and you see a WH Smith, you'll be able to get the classic flavors like happy banana, chocolate, vanilla, or if you want some of the more different and interesting flavors like creamy cookie, then just use my discount code online. They're a great blend of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, meaning they're gonna give you enough energy and feel sustained until your next meal. Now, let's get back to this shift. So I'm just gonna have a little bit of a downtime here. I got nominated for a taxi award at Parliament, which is fun. YouTuber Tom Huckley, known to many as Tom the Taxi Driver. Oh, and the, uh, the cabbies do Atlantic Road team. They were, they were there as well. It's just a nice sort of communal thing about the trade, really. Produced by one of the unions, so obviously directly uh, fund this as well. Uh, just nice to see what's going on, where people are getting tickets and stuff like that, really. So The Victoria rank is looking empty. What a touch. So I get to join on here. This little feeder portion. There's a cab in front of me. But we soon feed over to the main rank itself on Terminus Place. And there's a big queue of people waiting here. I think it's more than just luck today. It's clearly quite busy. Um, and as I'm soon to learn, there's quite a few things going on in town. British summertime at Hyde Park. Or these people are going to the Royal Albert Hall. Turns out Gregory Porter is playing there. Uh, in this case, because we're going north and we head up to the Royal Albert Hall, we're just going to take the force left here out onto Buckingham Palace Road. And we're able to get the right into Eccleston Street. This is a right turn for taxis only as well. Otherwise, it's quite a difficult route to be able to do this. Forward Belgrave Place and forward into Belgrave Square. You can see that's the Norwegian embassy on the right hand side. Quite a lot of embassies are clustered in this area. The Spanish is on this corner. The Portuguese embassy is up on that corner over there. It's quite interesting to see what embassies have kind of nice big buildings and some of them proper hidden away. Lead by Wilton Terrace, forward into Wilton Crescent and left into Wilton Place. It's a bit heavy here on Wilton Place and that's probably because everyone's trying to skip Hyde Park Corner because of the aforementioned British summertime. The right hand side is the Barclay Hotel. It's always a little bit settling when you're trying to drop at the Barclay Hotel because there's always a super nice car outside. As an example, that is a Bugatti Chiron. It's about a two million pound motor. Yeah, you've got to be careful when your punters get out and hopefully don't open a door into it. We eventually get through, get our left into Knightsbridge, and from here, it's a straight line all the way to Royal Albert Hall. 
bear right into the continuation of Knightsbridge, forward Kensington Road, forward Kensington Gore, past the Royal Geography Society, and then set them down here on the left. Maybe we'll see them later on. It's always worth bearing these things in mind that with all these different events going on, it can kind of arm your knowledge for later on in the day. I head back to the kind of general Knightsbridge Harrodsy area. It's always a bit risky when you get to this point at Brompton Road. This bit of traffic can you know, last about 10 minutes up till Scotch Corner. And if you've not got a job in by this point, it's a bit of a risky game to play. I could potentially sit through all that traffic and not grab a job. Luckily, right at this beginning part, I pick up these people who want to go to the Seabird and Blackfriars. It's actually part of the Hoxton Hotel, which is super confusing because it's not in Hoxton. It's part of the Hoxton brand. Yeah, confusing, I know, but always double check it. So get through Brompton Road, past the Mandarin, Knightsbridge, and peel off onto the slip road of Hyde Park Corner. I don't want the bus lane here because I want to get into the Palace Roads. So if I use the bus lane, I've got to cut across multiple lanes of traffic. Might as well just set myself up for the correct lane first time. You can see the area is getting a little bit busy because all the uh, safety barriers are going out on Park Lane. So around Hyde Park Corner, Constitution Hill. Down the Spur Road and out on the Birdcage Walk. Unlike the last video where Birdcage Walk was shut, this one's open. That's the Wellington Barracks on the right hand side, of course named after uh, Sir Arthur Wellesley, the Duke of Wellington, and that's where the King's foot guards are based. It's all going well until we get up near that junction of Stories Gate. These traffic lights are some of the worst in London. The phasing on them is awful, and you can see there's a, a bit of traffic getting into Great George Street. That's the Institute of Civil Engineers on the right hand side. You know, members of that included like um, Sir Charles Barry, uh, the sort of key architect behind. Uh, the Houses of Parliament, he would have been a member there and obviously quite fitting in terms of its proximity from the Houses of Parliament. This route is marvellous because once I'm over Westminster Bridge, I can use that little left. Uh, it's like a little slip road for buses and taxis right by the Platt Plaza, Westminster. Pulling us out neatly onto York Road. And when we're on York Road, there's a bus lane that takes you all the way up to Tennyson Way, which is the IMAX at Waterloo. Pulling around onto Stamford Street, the flashing amber light is my ultimate nemesis. I feel like this is the one thing that needs to be redesigned about like the highway code and different things. Many pedestrians get it wrong because it's a flashing green person and they assume that means, oh, it's green, I can cross. When it means no, only cross if you're already on the crossing. If anything, it should be flashing red, but you know, that's my two cents. This bit of Stamford Street by Waitrose is usually pretty slow. So sometimes I can cut through uh, Paris Gardens and come out by um, Chancel Street where the old public carriage office is. I know there's actually a side door to the hotel and restaurant that they're after. So I set them there. What is the name of that street? I can't think. It's quite, it's quite handy actually. Yeah, Colombo Street. So you stop there and there's a door uh, on the side there. In the most luckiest of circumstances, out of this weird inconspicuous side door here, another passenger comes out and wants to jump in my cab. Nice. Now as I leave onto Blackfriars Road, you can see the infamous number 230 Blackfriars Road just in front of us. And that was of course where I conducted all 13 of my appearances to become a London taxi driver. But what's hilarious about it is the very first time I went to that building, it took me three attempts to find the right building. First time I went to the Palestra, which is on the junction of Blackfriars Road and Union Street. Second time I went to 230 Blackfriars Road, which is on this side of Blackfriars Road. And then the third time you actually have to go around the back. That's where the entrance was there. Public carriage office has since moved to Baker Street and then following that it's now moved to Greenwich. So yeah, all over. And it's a lady who wants to go to multiple drops. They just want to start off by first going near the sea containers on Upper Ground, then to Covent Garden, and then to Mayfair. The actual locations kind of confuse me a little bit, but by having rough areas to head to, uh, I can sort of work it out en route. I opt for the left here into Stamford Street and then do the right into Rennie Street by Waitrose. So of course it removes one of the traffic lights uh, on Blackfriars Road. Rennie Street is actually named after John Rennie who uh, a couple of the bridges in London 
uh, were sort of his designs. John Rennie is where that street name comes from, not the indigestion tablet. Lady just runs into her apartment, grabs something, and five minutes later comes back out. Second drop, they want to go to Hotel Amano, which is on Russell Street, Covent Garden. So from here, you can pretty clearly see it. You just set up for Waterloo Bridge. You can see on the right hand side, they're gutting the old ITV offices here, as well as IBM. This is going to be an absurdly large development, which is going to block so much of the housing there on upper ground. And it's just going to look so ghastly on the Thames, it's going to block a lot of the skyline. But not that the ITV building was particularly pretty either. Keep going past the National Theatre, the British Film Institute, White House Apartments, and we're going to take a left on the Concert Hall approach. This then sets you up very neatly uh, for Waterloo Bridge. You just peel left here. All of which looks pretty clear, as presumably all the theatres are already loading up for their nighttime performances. So we drop a friend here at this hotel and we're going to be going on to Mayfair. Now the lady's actually after a restaurant called Aikida on Brook Street, kind of near Claridge's Hotel. As I pull off, I actually stop by the stage door of the Theatre Royale, which I actually got asked that on an appearance once, and I have a, just a double think about this before I head off. Because of where I am in this little Covent Garden area, it's quite important to get this right. If I head north, I'm ending up chasing my tail, wiggling up and down through Covent Garden, Soho, etc. I'm thinking I'm going to exit out onto the Strand. I'm going to use that to get my way over into Mayfair. My thinking of going under and using the Strand is that if all the theatres have loaded up, then there's not going to be a lot of traffic in this area. Whereas if you're going through Covent Garden, Soho, there's going to be a lot of people going out for restaurants and dinner and stuff, meaning that could be a bit busier than going past the theatres. It's looking clear, so far so good. So I go to King Charles I Island, leave that by Coxburgh Street. Forward into Pall Mall, right St. James's Street, and forward me into Albemarle Street. Left Stafford, right Dover, left Hay Hill, right Barclay Street, round Barclay Square, pull us up Davy Street, right onto Brook Street, past Claridge's, set down on left. Nice. I'm super lucky though to get an on and off job. It's important to have a little look on Brook Street where I am. Um, because I'm opposite the Claridge's Hotel rank. If there's drivers waiting there, then respectively, it's their job. But fortunately enough, it's pretty busy. There's no drivers waiting at the Claridge's rank. The job is mine. If you want to learn a little bit more about taxi driver etiquette, I'll leave the video up here. Now, the gentleman wants to go to the Churchill Hotel, Portman Square. Or up for Duke Street, get ourselves a left into Wigmore Street. And there's not much more I can do here. I've just got to go around Portman Square, drop the gentleman on the left there. I go up to York Street to have a little breather there. British Summertime Festival in Hyde Park, a lot more American accents in town, and even a couple of crisp £50 notes. Obviously, I didn't earn £100. Like One job was like £10. I think one was like 25 What makes it difficult now is that because the majority of stuff is on credit cards, when someone does pay with a £50 note, you still need an adequate amount of float to be able to cover it. Because, you know, if it's like an £8 job, uh, you know, you've got to give like £42 change, of course. Half eight, we could be in that little slack period, but could be quite busy. I'm going to head back down, well, I'm in a one way now, but I'm going to head back down Baker Street, kind of Selfridges direction. Selfridges, Mayfair, bosh, we'll, we'll find something, I'm sure. I come down Gloucester Place, and I don't really know why. Baker Street has the most establishments on it, i.e. restaurants, shops, stuff like that. So you're more likely to pick someone else up there. So I don't know why I'm on Gloucester Place, but luckily it pays off because a concierge from Portman Towers comes over and hails me down on the street there. I pull right into George Street. The continuation of this is closed, but pick up these passengers here. They want to go to Hans Crescent. So the hardest part of this run is just getting started because I can't go through George Street. I spin round. I'm actually forced back up Gloucester Place because I can't go forward into George Street, nor can I do a right onto Gloucester Place. I eventually get ourselves all sorted and we're heading south in the correct direction. Forward Portman Square, forward Portman Street and right into Oxford Street. We can just cruise our way down Park Lane. 
It is a little bit heavier here because of the lane restrictions. You might be wondering why I'm not using the bus lane here on Park Lane. Well, it just comes back to lane decisions. I don't want to get to Hyde Park Corner and be in the most left-hand lane because you have to cut across about two, sometimes three lanes to get into the correct lane. Because of the fact that Sloan Street is one way southbound, I opt to go all the way around Hyde Park Corner and in via Knightsbridge. <music> Left into Sloan Street, right into Hans Crescent. Now they're actually after this particular block here, right by the Ecuadorian Embassy. Bit of a tour of the embassies today really, isn't it? The Ecuadorian Embassy, of course, was where Julian Assange was holed up for many years. Whatever happened to Julian Assange? Although the car outside on the diplomat only parking, it's a weird parking spot, it's kind of, it's got like these X's on it and it just says diplomat only, is actually from the Saudi embassy. I guess it doesn't specify which embassy that parking is for. Now, round the back of Harrods, it looks like the back door rank is pretty clear. However, I can't quite get on it from this angle. I'm wanting this driver to just move up a little bit and I might be able to squeeze on if a job pulls a few more taxis round. Because of course, technically I'd have to go through a no entry, which is of course against the law. I stop on Pavilion Road because I've got a bit of a squeaky flip seat. A sound that's doing my nutting. Nope, I ain't got it. Thought in my cleaning box of tricks. I normally carry some silicon spray because you have a lot of plastics in the back here. And sometimes you can get some really annoying squeaks develop, so that's one. I think this flip seat. Yeah, anyway, that's just really annoying, but I can't fix it now. So, um, <laughs> right, come back, go back to work, Tom, go back to work. It might be worth just quickly going through the back door of Harrods again and then moving on, so yeah. And fortunately enough, there's basically no cabs there. Where do people want to go? Selfridges, second time today. But this is an example of how the exact same route, just a few hours different, has a major difference. Look how quickly we can get out and start cruising and be on our way with this job. You can see all the provisions going out for the end of the concert. Hopefully I won't be in the area for when it pops. Straight up Park Lane and then in via Upper Brook Street. You'll notice these guys here with duffel bags outside of their cars. They've actually got a load of Guns N' Roses merch. So presumably gonna try and tout and flog some of that at the end of the gig. Now, exactly just like the last job I did to Selfridges, this bunch knows the bail here on Duke Street. 22 minutes quicker. That's insane. We've gone from 34 minutes down to 11 and a half minutes. I escaped the traffic here on Duke Street by going past the Beaumont Hotel and pick up here on Providence Court. Touch. This lady wants to go to Randolph Crescent in Little Venice. Now, I start off by using Woods Muse because if I turn left here, I'm very much pulled south and I have to go back through Duke Street again. Not ideal. So, forward here. I could use Park Street, but that's looking a little bit heavy also. So, I come out using Lee's Place, bringing us out onto Park Lane. I want Warwick Avenue, and to get there, I'm going to use Edgware Road. So, ideally, I want to be starting heading north as soon as possible. I come down Park Lane a little bit, as I can use the Grosvenor Gate Slip Road to get ourselves north. Perfectly, as I'm in that Grosvenor Gate Slip Road, I can hear Sweet Child of Mine and the best bit of the song, right as Slash starts the solo. I mean, it's great. I didn't even need to get a ticket to go to British Summertime. I've just heard it whilst working in the cab. Touch. <laughs> Up Park Lane. And it's amazing as we go around Marble Arch, I can still hear the music from that concert reverberating off the walls of those terrace houses along Bayswater Road. In fact, as I go straight up Edgware Road, it's like this, the sound is traveled up that long road. I can still hear it as we get up to George Street. I can just about hear them starting November rain. With my passenger, we just go all the way up, eventually get ourselves a left into Harrow Road, go around the Bishopsbridge Road roundabout and leave by Warwick Avenue. Right into Clifton Gardens, left into Randolph Crescent. Bosch, 16 minutes. As I was going up Edgware Road, they just started playing November Rain. So I've dropped off. I'm probably gonna go back down Edgware Road and they're probably just about finishing that song off because it's so bloody long. 20 to 10, not quite home time yet. And I'm buzzed. I feel buzzing because of the people in town. So a couple more and we'll call it a day, I think. I do enjoy my job, you know. It is a bit boring and repetitive at times, like knowing that 
to get my work and earn my money, I just have to sort of do the same sequence over and over again. But it's enjoyable. It's like easy enough. It's relaxing. It's, you know, like when people say you get into a flow state and like flow state is that perfect mixture of like challenging enough, but not too difficult that you don't want to do it altogether. It's not super mundane, but it's not like too intensive at the same time. And it sits between those two. Do I just go home now? No, I'd go back in. I might pick up Slash, who knows? That'd be great, wouldn't it? Now, heading back in, I get to Edgware Road and these ladies just say Cromwell Hospital. They're probably not going to the Cromwell Hospital, but there's a lot of, you know, apartments in that general area. It's a good kind of landmark to just say, take me in that direction. I know from experience today, not to go down Park Lane because that's going to be heavy and the gig could be finishing at any time. West Carriage Drive is shut, so that's not an option. So I've got to go Kensington Church Street, right Seymour Street, forward into Connaught Square, left Connaught Street, Hyde Park Street and out onto Bayswater Road. As I go past Victoria Gate, I can hear knocking on Heaven's Door. So all the big bangers from Guns N' Roses are played. I'm just hoping I'm not going to be in the area when it pops. It's all going incredibly well. Bayswater Road, left Palace Gardens Terrace, Kensington Church Street. No, <laughs> it's shut. This is exactly what that yellow road sign was trying to tell me earlier. If only I heeded the warning. No. What kind of a closure is this? Park Lane, no. West Carriage Drive, no. Kensington Church Street, no. Who does this? Luckily, instant knowledge comes in, Notting Hill Gate. I'm gonna use Hillgate Street, Uxbridge Street, and come down Campton Hill Road. Wiggle around here a little bit. I come along Sheffield Terrace because I'm thinking I can maybe resume using Kensington Church Street. But no, the signage tells me it's closed the whole length. So I go down Horton Street and I wiggle my way by Kensington High Street Station to ensure we can get the left into Wright's Lane. A little bit of shuffling and shimmying, work our way down to the Cornwall Hospital and the lady lets me know that she's after Collingham Place. But honestly, how does that happen? That's why stuff goes really badly wrong in London. It's different boroughs controlling different things. I imagine the park's private because that's Royal Parks. Obviously, Park Lane is Westminster. And then you've got Kensington Church Street, which is, of course, Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea. Obviously, not one is in agreement with one another. They just click close all of them. So it's just going to be chaos, I think, in town. I don't know if, if, if it's already popped off. As soon as everyone comes out of Guns N' Roses... Yeah, it's Park Lane northbound open. I mean, what would happen if they shut it? Like, that would just be ridiculous. It's good then. I might go to the Royal Albert Hall then. That's probably going to be my, my bet, I think. And then hopefully I can get one not going north. Royal Albert Hall to Victoria would be ideal. So let's just see. Maybe I could pick up the same people I had earlier. It's always the way that you push yourself a little bit, you stay out later, and you think, ooh... Should have just gone home rather than doing like a couple of like really mentally like taxing jobs. But I push forward because I learned that the Royal Albert Hall is just about to finish. So I do a couple of laps of the Royal Albert Hall before eventually picking up this couple who wish to go to Euston. This could be sticky. Going past the aftermath of one of the biggest rock bands in the world and into the heart of a busy West End when every theatre is finishing, yeah, it might not be that great. Either I go super wide or take a punt on going through the middle. The issue is, even if I want to get really high up onto the Marlborough Road, there's not much I can do. Even if I want to go in the wrong direction, I can't go up Kensington Church Street and that'd be a mega diversion I might just be better off going through the middle. And using a little bit of intel, I think, yeah, I will take a punt on going through the middle. So we get through the Piccadilly underpass and you can see there's a mass amount of people heading towards Green Park Station. More than likely, what they've done is they've made Hyde Park Corner exit only because of course the sheer volume of people all just going straight for that station would probably make it incredibly dangerous. So it splits it up. Some people will go down to Knightsbridge. Some people will go up towards Green Park, just distributes the load a bit. But thankfully, because of the average demographic of a Guns N' Roses fan, it's not too chaotic. Once we're past Green Park Station, it all quietens out a little bit. And remarkably, we get straight through Piccadilly, up Shaftesbury Avenue. Up Gower Street and into Torrington Place. Gordon Square, Gordon Street, forward into Melton Street, 
and then into Euston Station. It took 32 minutes, which by comparison, the job earlier to Selfridges was 34 minutes. It really does surprise you this job sometimes and what can be really bad is pretty simple and what can be pretty simple can be pretty bad. There's not many cabs at Euston, but I'm thinking I'm probably just gonna head home now. And on the Euston Road, I get flagged down because I forget to turn off my light. Fortunately enough, it's quite a short job and these people just wanna go to the Fitzroy Kimpton Hotel. A Little bit of wiggling, but we get there in a remarkably quick time. Basically, we do a left into that little bit by Great Portland Street, left into Bowles Over Street, left into Clipstone Street, going past the now defunct Tower Tavern, of course it sits right at the bottom of BT Tower, left Cleveland Street, right into Maple Street, and we go forward over into University Street, right down Gower Street, left in the Torrington Place, right Bedford Way, left Russell Square, and right at the Fitzroy Kimpton. Get them there in about six minutes. Nice. That's my shift done. If you want to learn a little bit more about my work as a London taxi driver, then check out this video over here.